we're going to advance the cam, the intake cam, by about one tooth, which will turn it from a uh, high efficiency cam to a high performance cam. But you know what? We're not even gonna wait for coolant to start it. Right now we're doing coolant and we have to add the accessory belt. That way we can actually let it idle and get all the way up to temperature and uh, also a muffler because we don't want to go deaf. So we're drawing a vacuum on the cooling system right now that does two things. First, it lets us know if there's gonna be any leaks. And second is with a complete vacuum inside the cooling system, then we can draw up the coolant that we're gonna be putting in there. And in a mid-engine car, that just makes installing coolant a lot easier. The belt's just been installed, so that means now we need to verify the function of the water pump as well as the alternator. So we're just gonna start it for a little bit, make sure that we're circulating and charging. All right, we are both circulating and charging. Excellent. Now it's time to place the exhaust under this car. Uh, right now we've only got the header, so it's important from here, we need to add a flex section and then everything else is still gonna be rubber mounted using the factory rubber mounts. As far as the fabrication components, we're gonna be using Vibrant. It's the same components I use on the race car. I've never had any issues with them on the track. They tend to be pretty durable. Essentially, we just want to tuck it as high as possible to avoid any kind of ground clearance issues. So it's time to set up the welder. After a couple hours of welding, we now have a completed exhaust. Turned out pretty nice. The, the Toyota MR2 has a bit of a goofy gauge cluster, so it's, it can be driven with, uh, with an aftermarket ECU, and in fact, I do make a module that helps that, but we're gonna go ahead and use it as an opportunity to give us something that can help monitor even more things. This is the Haltec IC7. It's a full gauge cluster, but it does a couple extra things too. The engine is off right now, but it'll give you like full diagnostic screens and whatnot, which can be pretty handy trackside or at the dyno and whatnot, just to be able to see more data. Uh, but generally, most of the time, it just acts as a standard gauge cluster. <laughs> this is your race car? This is my race car, yes. This is what I race in 24 hours of lemons. <laughs> okay, when you say that it's in 24 hours of lemons, a lot of stuff makes sense about yes. how you <laughs> did certain things. Yes, yes. But the that... wing was specifically selected to look terrible. Okay. <laughs> Goal achieved. <laughs> exactly. But 270 horsepower, so that's the same. Yeah, thing. now I race it at 240. Yeah, but you just recently unlocked that 270, right? Yes. Right. That's reverse. That's drive.
fast. <laughs> first and second gear, I, I mean, I couldn't really get into third and keep going into it, but uh -huh. first and second are gone. Yeah. It's just like they just disappear. So are you happy we put a 2AR in yours? Yes, yours? yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see what it feels like with 30 less horsepower, but I imagine it's still going to be Oh yeah, pretty, yeah, it's still pretty, pretty, pretty close, yeah. It's, it's a blast. <laughs> when you're in it, you don't realize that you're driving something that looks like this. Thank you for doing this to my car, dude. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. Well, so Mark has got to go home now because he's been here for like five days, basically building my whole car for me. And uh, he has a, a home and a life that he has and a to wife and two in. kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah a wife, yeah. a life, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, this, this kind of concludes the building part of the MR2, but you might have noticed that we didn't do one very crucial thing, which is actually drive it or see how much horsepower it makes uh, and it still needs to get tuned. Yeah. Um, so we're at the end of the week going to go up and get it tuned up uh, at Turbo XS with my buddy Jermaine, who's tuned many of my cars. Last time that I was here with this car, you were so kind enough to put it on the dyno for me. Do you remember how much power you made? 107 horsepower, 107 I think. horsepower. That's pretty bad. <laughs> That's pretty low on the dyno. Might be the lowest. Now, we've done an engine swap because that motor that you dynoed blew up at the racetrack. Okay, yeah. It's got a 2.5 liter Camry engine in it now. Okay. This engine from the factory made 150 horsepower. Okay. I think that's with a hybrid motor, but that's because it was tuned for fuel efficiency, like all this stuff. All right, so we're throwing all that we've out the window now. We've thrown that all out the window. Okay. And we've taken Toyota's own parts and used them against them. So everything that they engineered to be efficient, we're turning into horsepower. Hopefully it doesn't revolt. Hopefully not, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't <laughs> yeah. back, literally backfire yeah. on us. So we're gonna try and make a nice conservative pull just to make sure everything's okay and uh, give us a decent baseline to go from. Hundred sixty two point eight foot pounds and one hundred fifty point five horsepower. So the base map's actually pretty good. I think it's going to do okay. So we're going to make a pull here and see what happens. I'm hoping it'll sneak over two hundred. On that last dyno pull, we just touched over 200. We had a little misfire in the top end. I don't know what that is, but we'll try and figure it out. The 107 is where we started with the, uh, the old engine. Uh, first dyno pull we made was 148 horsepower, which was a good start. We eventually made up the 160, 170. Uh, the last pull we had just now, that was 216 horsepower. Um, and I think there's some more power in it if we can run a little bit more timing, but I think it has to do with the IATs. So we're gonna try and direct some fresh airflow towards the intake and we'll see how that goes. So we made the airflow change and now we're up to 219. I think the airflow is a good thing. I don't think it's gonna work, but we can try to add a little more timing because we have better airflow to the intake now. If we get any knock events, I'm basically gonna pull the timing back out and we'll be done here for pump gas. Because I added that one degree, we picked up a knock count right here. So it wasn't worth it. Now, we're gonna drain out the 93 octane and give E85 a try. I might have filed the plugs, so we're gonna take a ride to Advanced Auto Parts and see if we can get some new spark plugs and get this thing back running. He's pretty good. We got almost a nine horsepower gain, 228, it's pretty good.
man, made 230 on the 85. Yeah. Uh, 220 on pump gas, 93 octane with, uh, I guess, a little bit of 87 blend in there. <laughs> yeah. And me working around the Haltech Elite, which is kind of the first time I've tuned it in this new version. So, yeah, did well. 10, 10 horsepower gain from from pump to the E85 is on an NA car is pretty significant, yeah? Yeah, I'm impressed with that yeah. by far. How do you like tuning the 2AR motor? If I could compare it to something like, uh, say, the K24, it's pretty good, not bad. I'm happy with 230. That is, let's see, we started 107, so double that would be 214. Yep, which so, we did that. Yeah, which we did that pretty <laughs> yeah. easily on yeah. pump. Yeah, so we're way over double yeah. the horsepower. Yeah. Man, thanks so much. No dude. problem, this is great, You're man. the best. This is cool. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming uh, in and hanging yeah, out with us. You'll have to rip it at the track sometime. Sometime I'll have to go. Okay. Let's do it. All right, it's a date. Yeah. It's a date. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. <laughs>